Hello and welcome to our latest in our series of makes here at Crown Talk Art. And what we're going to make today is we're going to have a go at making this lady. Actually, this is really very simple to make, um, but it's one of those things that looks quite complicated. We start off with this by making a cone. Now, the other week I actually showed you how to make a cone template. Uh, if you've missed that video, it's out there somewhere. But basically what I've done is I've cut, taken a piece of paper, drawn around a plate, cut it in half, and then cut, then put the two halves into, let's fold it up properly, the two halves together, and then cut off a section to make a piece like that. And that will then give us a skirt that's sort of very similar to that. However, you can have it taller and thinner if you want to, or you can have it broader, it's entirely up to you, and you might find a bit of trial and error goes a long way. Now with this particular one, I've actually rolled a doily into the clay to make a pattern. I've then actually gone over it with some coloured slip, that's or paint if you're using air dry clay, before I took the doily off, dabbed it all over and then pulled the doily off and left the pattern. I'm not going to do that on the one I'm making now. So I'm going to get this doily. This is a doily which my mother made many, many years ago. Uh, you can get them from car boot sales, charity shops, all that sort of thing. Uh, unless you've got relatives, of course, who do like crocheting doilies. So we lay it on the clay and roll it in nice and hard. Do this before you cut the shape out because when you actually roll it, of course, you do make the clay go further. And we've got the pattern. I can then take my template and I can cut it out. So here's one I did earlier, rolled and cut out, ready to go. So having got our shape like that, now we turn it into a cone. So like we did with the trees, we've got to get these two edges together. So I've got a few tools here. I've got a knife, a paintbrush, an olive pop stick. So I'm going to get my knife and I'm going to go all the way up the join where it's going to go. Put little crosses on, so do the same on the other side. And we get the, something to join it with, in this case, a clay and water. Uh, again, if you're using air dry clay, just water will be enough. Paint it down one of the joints, don't need both of us, it'll get a bit too soggy. And then we coax them together so that these two pieces come together like that. And I find it always helps to start at the bottom and join it all the way up to get that cone shape. And the next thing I'm going to do now is I need to join it, make sure it's not going to come apart. So we do that from the inside. So I get a piece of clay and I make it into a little worm. If you're no good at rolling coils, doesn't matter. It could be a strip of clay. A nice little worm that's going to go in there. And then up that join there, along there, put some slip. Lay that in. Join, and then using my lollipop stick, I'm going to then go to smooth it down on one side like that, and then on the other side, all the way up to make sure it's well and truly stuck. It's important to make sure you go either side of the join, not along the join, to make it good and strong. You can smooth this out as much as you want, it doesn't really matter, it's not going to be looked at a lot because it's going to be underneath, but. Some people are more perfectionist than others. I'm definitely not one of them. But I will take the worst of it off like that. Okay. Now, of course, down the back, we've got a little, mark, little line where the uh, join is. So into that, I do apologise, I've got a runny nose this afternoon. I'm going to get a little piece of clay, which is going to go in there, so it's going to be thinner than that. Just to fill in that crack. This is going to be the back of the skirt. Again, let's just join that in, work it into the gap. Now, as you can see, of course, you're messing up the pattern. That's the, that's the one downside of doing slab work with doilies. But what you can then do, as we did with the Christmas trees, is get your doily and press it in where the pattern is being lost, just to add a little bit of texture. Now it's less noticeable. Okay. That's the back 
looking really good. The next part I'm going to do is going to be the main part of the body. So I'm going to get a lump of clay, roll it. The lump of piece depends upon the size of the your cone, of course. But this is going to make the body. It's going to be about that sort of size. Because what I'm then going to do is I'm actually going to then push my think thumb in it and turn it into a little pinch pop. Pinch it round. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth it right down. I want to curve it back in on itself a bit. And this is going to make her bodice. Like that. Go on like that. Get this up a bit as smooth as we can. So it's about a little bit of time just smoothing it. Of course, you can also use a bowl, put it into a bowl and roll it around to smooth it. I'm just going to roll it around on the board a bit. Right. So even doing that helps to make it a little bit more even. A bit there, I want to work on a bit more. Is that the other thing? And then we decide which bits is going to be the front and which is the back. I think that's probably going to be the front. So that's going to go on there in a minute, but before we put it on, we need to take the top off this. And this is because we want to have a hole there, so that the air from there is going to be able to travel out of the body through there. Then, having decided on that, we can then paint the slip around it. What I sometimes do is I do it around the different ways of what people think. They think you've got to put the scratches first. You can do it. You can do it either way. I quite like to do it with the wet clay. I think it goes in a bit better. Now we put it up. So where's my back? Where's my front? That's my back. So that's going to go on there. It's going to make my front. And then what I'm going to do is then tuck it in, smooth it down, make the body like that. So we're going to make a head. Now, if you're wondering about sizes of head, the general sort of rule is that the head should be able to fit into the body from the neck to the base in four sections. So that would be one, two, three, four. So this might be a little bit big. I think we'll be all right. So roll it around. Again, get it as smooth as you can. Now, if, it's, if you're doing a particularly big model, you might want to make that hollow. And in fact, I'm going to hollow this out a little bit. So again, I'm just going to put my finger in there just to thin out the clay. This just allows it to dry better. And you're less likely to get explosions because the clay hasn't dried right through. Okay. Again, let's smooth it down, get our head nice and smooth. That's going to go onto there. And again, because we're going to have an air pocket and we're going to fire this, it's not air dry. We've got to make sure the air from the head can escape. So I'm going to put a hole through here. Make sure that goes right through and I can see daylight through it. And then cross hatch the head around the neck. Put it on it. And again, decide where it's going to be the front, which is the back. And that might be the front of her head. Put it on there, and this time I'm going to screw it round, around, around, around till it stops moving. There we go, that's on. However, to make sure it stays on, I am going to put a little bit of clay around it. In particular, I'm going to put a bit of clay around the back of the neck just to make sure the head stays on. So, again, that piece there. This is the back. We've got a nice little flowing tail going on at the back here, which is great. So, dip that in some slip, put it around the back. And this is where the rope up stick starts to come into its own. Again, get in there, smooth it down onto the back of the neck. This is going to be covered by the hair, so it's whilst it's nice to get it nice and tidy, again, you're not actually going to see this, but it is going to make sure that the head stays attached to the body. I've got 
head, head, chest and skirt, all done. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the arms. So again, I'm going to roll some clay out. If you're having trouble with rolling, you can always get square pieces. First, it doesn't matter too much whether you've got a flat coil or not for this bit. But try to relax into it. You're more likely to get a round coil. Now, the length of the arms, you can practice this and find out for yourself. But if you stand up straight and you hold your arms down by your sides, you'll find that the, your fingertips come to about halfway down your thighs. So her arms need to be that long. So let's have a look. It's not about that size. Now, I'm not sure that I haven't got her arms a bit big here, so I'm going to make them a little thinner. Okay, and do it again. Yeah, a bit long. You see, see the difference now because that's far too long and you can see instantly that it looks too long. Yeah, let's do that again. Okay. That's one hand, one arm. Right. Now, always do these sorts of things in pairs. So before you attach the arm, make sure you have another matching arm. So, I need to do them side by side, get it off. Again, actually, they're not the same length, so let's put a bit more off there. Right, I'm ready to attach them. So, the arms attach at the top of the bodice here, so they're going to go there. Put some slip on, a bit of scraping. And put the arm in position. Like that. Now for this particular figure, we have the arms around the front. You can have your arms anywhere you like, but this particular one I'm making, we're going to have the arms around the front there. Okay, so put one arm on, then repeat the same thing on the other side of the body. Put a slip, put your scoring, attach your arm. Now, to make them look a little bit more like shoulders, get a little bit more clay. Little the horseshoe around the top. Yeah, under her chin, that, like that. One side, and that on the other side. I mean, you can make a feature out of this, which would look like if you were going for a short sleeve dress, you could actually really have some quite flared out pieces to look like the shoulder pads of a, of a, a floaty top. But I'm not going to do that. So I'll smooth that in, and I'll smooth that on the other side as well. And it makes her, gives her a nice pair of shoulders. By the way, if you can hear a sound in the background, we've got Emma with us today. Hello! She, again, she is busy painting cows. <laughs> uh, no, dogs, it's okay. Sorry, when Emma went hello, the dogs thought that meant somebody was coming. I've also been cleaning out under the sink, which has to be done. Yeah, this week is our, what we call our shutdown week. It's the week where we try and get all the nasty jobs done in the pottery. shoulders on. I'm just going to get a little bit of water on my fingers just to clean them off a bit. I don't want them anything more than very slightly damp. Just to smooth that in. And the same on the other side. Always be very careful with clay not to get it too wet otherwise it will disintegrate. Just enough to get my fingers clean so I can create a little figure like that. Okay so you see, I haven't given her hands as such. I'm trying to keep the whole thing very simple. Let's uh, give her some elbows so she's going to have her hands like that. So the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to give her some hair. Actually, I lied. I'm going to give her the top of the dress. So we need a little piece of clay. Some here. So I'm going to give her a little collar. And I'm going to do this by taking a little strip of clay. I'm actually going to roll this out even thinner. You can get away with this when you're attaching it onto something else, but not if it was on its own. Nice and thin. And then I'm going to cut this into a triangle. Uh, 
triangular piece out like that. Let's go on the other side of the collar and then use that as a template to cut out the other side of the collar. Two little triangles. So we'll put some scraping on the back of them very gently, don't want to distort them too much. And then add a tiny drop of wet clay. And then in position. You don't have to hold the hat too shaky a hand. One like that. And then side, make sure I'm going the right way, yes that's right, and then a bit of wet clay, oops that's a bit too wet, just drive it off a little bit, adjust my fingers, otherwise that is going to cause me all sorts of problems, there we go, and then put that into position on the other side of her neck, like that, right, then using my lollipop stick, I'm just going to tuck that in under her chin, that, like the collar of her dress. Yeah. This is a very uh, Edwardian figure we've got here, I think. Uh, very austere dress, I'm afraid, but there we go. The sort of dress you'd expect your housekeeper to have in the old days. Right, so we've got our collar on. To give her buttons down the front, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my paintbrush here, the back end of the paintbrush, and I'm just going to make some holes, not all the way through, but deep enough just to look like button holes. There we go, in her dress. Now I'm going to give her some hair. You do this bit after you've done all the fiddly bits because you're not going to be uh, able to guess at things once the hair's on. So one of the ways I do it is I get the hair, squeeze out the clay really thin, Again, it doesn't matter as long as it's in contact with other clay, it'll hold it in place. Now, one edge is going to be thin, that's going to be her fringe, like that. Of course, you could also I say, make her quite an interesting hat if you wanted to as well. But we're going to go for just hair. So she's going to have a fringe, it's going to come down to there. So her hair's going to go on a bit like that to start with. So we put some slip over her bald head like that. and then we start to work the clay on it Oops, on. gets it down and around nice and tight into the head now, if you find you've got a lot of surplus like that don't be afraid to cut it off uh, because we're going to add more clay to this before we're done so turn it nice and tight into the head like that so our first bit of hair Ah, I could leave her like that with a short haircut. But I'm actually going to give this lady a slightly longer one. So I'm going to get some clay again, press it out. So you're going to flow down either side there. Again, you could have it coming down over her shoulders a bit more if you wanted to. I think I might do in this case like that. So again, a bit of slip on it. Like that. Put it on and then work it in. You see what I mean about covering up the ugly joins a bit more on the other side. Again, press it out nice and thin. Tear off at one end. Right. And then that's going to come down to the other side there. And again, let's put some slip on that. It comes down like that. Side. Take off some of that surplus okay, and then work it all together. Okay, lying down either side of her face. Now, of course, at the moment at the back, she's got a very short haircut back here. So, next thing to do is give her some hair around the back. So, our clay comes complete with Tiggs's hair. That's just going to come around. A little bit longer, so gonna pay extra that. for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like that. Work it in. Just put the gap 
there, so I had a little bit more play there. Put the hair at the back. Yeah, quite like it. Right. Lovely thing about clay is, of course, you can keep adding it and building it up to get it the shape that you want. Okay, so there, she's got a nice full head of hair. Like I said, that's probably a bit too much hair, I don't know. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to get my, in this particular case, I'm going to get my lollipop stick. I'm actually going to shape her hair up a bit. A little bit of a texture to her, glow, her flowing locks here. Don't have to, as you see with the other one, I've just left it as it is. I'm just going to do that just to give it interest. Okay. Now, at this point, we've more or less finished her, but if there's other things you want to do, you can. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to actually give her some flowers to hold. So here's some clay. I've rolled out nice and thin. I've got here a flower cutter, just a standard cutter. You can get from any of the um, cookware shops um, or online or whatever. This particular one I think we bought from the range here in the UK. Uh, so I'm going to make a little bouquet of five flowers. It's nice to do it with these sorts of things, do it uneven. So three flowers, five flowers or seven flowers and it will look much better than doing two or four. So I'm going to cut through cling film and that means oops, that we get a nice rounded edge to our flowers and they don't stick in the cutter. Um, one, two, three, four, so do another one, five, there we go, right. so I get all the plastic off them, like that, yeah, more securely stuck to that one, okay, okay. so I get one, two, and stuck to the table, okay, one, two, three, it's always worth cutting a couple of spares just in case, four, See if we can use the first one there as well. So I'll just put the squishy one out of the way. Yep. Just like that. Right. And then what I'm going to do with these as well, just to make them a little bit more interesting, I find with this cutter, it's a really nice idea to put a little ball of clay in the middle of them and it makes them just, it just put, makes them look better. I don't know why, but it does. So little pieces of clay here, roll them into balls. dip them in the paintbrush, stick them in the middle. Make sure you push them in well so they're nice, nicely stuck down. They're not going to fall out. I'm going to do is I'm going to stick these together in a little posy. Get them like that. Let's find the ugliest one. Be that, that one. And then paint some slip onto the back of the other ones. And then arrange them around him. Yeah. Like that. A bunch of flowers. Yeah, put that one there. That's that. And then on the back again to make sure they stay together, smooth them together. Just to stop you losing flowers along the way. And then put some slip on them. And put them in her hands. There you go. Little pose. <laughs> little pose of flowers. Obviously covering up her hands, the fact she hasn't got any. And then just to make it look a little bit more like a posy, underneath that I'm going to put a little triangle of clay. Like that. It's too big, make that smaller. A little triangle of clay, it's going to go under there like that. Okay. Let's make 
stalks. Stick that on. So I'm going to hold under there. Make sure that's stuck all right too. And then using the knife, I'm going to cut lines in it. stalks. I'm going to make them a little bit bigger with my lollipop stick. Give them a little bit of texture. There we go. Okay, so she's holding a little bouquet of flowers. And there she is, all finished. So that's our make for this week. So I hope you've enjoyed watching and look forward to seeing you again soon.